Are you ready for some flaming hot colors? Yeah? Good. Because in this new fluid acrylic painting tutorial, I'm going to show you how to combine acrylic pouring technique and mandala art using textured stencil application. And today you want to go for really hot, flaming hot color palette. And in the first part of the video, I'm going to show you how to create this dancing flames color base. And we're going to isolate some negative space in circles using these rings. And in the second part, I'm going to show you how to embellish this hot beauty using a lot of gold and some other metallics. And we're also going to use stencil to create beautiful mandala embellishments. And I have a super exciting news to share with you guys. So based on so many requests from you, by the way, thank you so much for that. I am finally going to offer fine art prints of some of my best and your favorite paintings from me. If you want to learn more, I will share more information about it at the end of the video, so make sure to watch till the end. And we are ready to rock it again. So let's get started. Flame Dance is a secret message today. And for my uh, negative space sections, I have already arranged them, but this is approximate position because right now I'm going to work on my negative space and I will need to shift them just a little bit. But let's get started with this. So first of all, I want to pour some black inside of the rings. And those sections, they will stay just pure black. I can remove the rings and I'm going to tilt out this paint a little bit. Maybe I need a little more on my bottom part. I'm going to tilt this out to help my colors level and then we'll put the rings back. If it goes a little bit outside of the ring, it's fine as long as it's everything's covered inside. So if the previous orientation was approximate, right now we're going to position our rings exactly where we want our mandalas or any other element to be. So I got my step ladder to be able to look from above. So let's start with this one. Yeah, this is actually perfect. Take your time, readjust as needed, because once you start blowing this out, it will be pretty much impossible to shift this. Yeah, if some black is outside, it's fine, as long as inside everything is covered. And I'm going to be adding colors for my negative space, so I want it to be really hot, full of flames. It's going to be still on a black base, so for some shades, I want to keep a lot of black. Okay, I think that's all the black that I need. The rest is going to be hot. The main red is naphthal red. I don't want to get any red inside of my negative space sections. And the rest is going to be just a mix of oranges and yellows and some metallic. Actually, I want to have very little yellow, so it's mostly going to be orange. And copper, of course. I think it also is amazing for such color palette. Actually, we need to get some orange and red closer to our rings, otherwise it's going to be too much black there. This one here is azo yellow. I'm only going to add it over red or orange. I don't want to have it over black because black and yellow give bit of a muddy color, so I need to be cautious of that. This is Naples yellow, just a little lighter, but more opaque yellow. I think it will help brighten up this color palette. And finally, some gold. Same story with gold. It does work better with black than yellow, but it gives this greenish brownish color, which I'm not a huge fan of. So trying not to put it right next to black. I almost forgot about white. Definitely needed to brighten this up. You know, recently I have been just a lot into flame and fire color palettes. Maybe it's just this time of the year and I want some warmth <laughs> and therefore my inspiration. 
need a little bit more red here, otherwise it's gonna be just black in this on the bottom. And here, okay, plenty of paint, plenty. I'm so excited to blow this out. I can't wait to see. So I think one has to go this way, that way, that way, and then on the bottom. You know what? I think even before getting started, I want to moisture the canvas in dry spots. This way paint is just gonna flow easier in the sections. See, that's what I'm talking about. I didn't wanna do it and that's exactly what I did. I overmixed yellow with black and I got this brown brownish greenish color. Oh well. Perfect example for you guys what not to do. <laughs> You know what? I totally forgot about my corners, so I'm gonna just pick up some of the drips. I blended in my colors at the top a little too much. See, I don't have a lot of these pops of brighter colors like I do in the bottom, which I really love. Oh, I missed a spot here. Man, the bottom part is flawless. It's absolutely perfection. Should give it another go. So this color, I like this Naples yellow very much. It's perfect here. Copper looking good here. March. Okay, let's see if it does the trick. Yes, now we're talking. Okay, this one here is not good, but this is perfect. You know, this part here is beautiful, but it has a bit too much black. And I want to have most of the black just in my negative space in these rings. So we need to try to create to have less of that black. Okay, time to do some finger swipes and then we're gonna be ready to remove the rings. Start from the large one. Almost ready for the final look. Well, of course, we're gonna be adding stencils, but at this stage. So cool. Now let me show you what we do next with this beautiful flame dance. <laughs> Whew, this one is hot. <laughs> the painting is dry, let's add in that embellishment. So I already positioned my stencils over the negative space and I secured them with the masking tape. And I always recommend leaving a little side of the masking tape just sort of tucked away so it's easy for you to peel off once you're done. Just a little tip there. And at this time I decided that I'm gonna do stencils one by one. I'm gonna move from the biggest one all the way to the smallest one. 
And for the stencils that are slightly off the canvas, I recommend also putting cups so that the stencil do not bend over. Otherwise, you're increasing the chances of the uh, some of that paint and gel get under the stencil. Okay, so let's get to the process. As always, first of all, I'm adding gloss gel. Still get a lot of questions about it. So the main purpose is to prevent paint bleeding under the stencil, but I also love creating texture with it. enough gel my next step is to add that stencil so for this one i want my stencil embellishments to really pop so i'm adding very bright gold this is iridescent gold i will add a couple other uh, accents of colors but i want it to be, be mainly gold just spread it carefully over the gel you don't want to lift the stencil so you need to move very carefully spread it like butter on a bread this is good and here i have a bunch of copper and red and i want to have some pops of those colors in my stencil embellishment as well it doesn't need to be symmetrical i think it's actually going to be even better if it's going to be not symmetrical oh okay, okay. All right, let's lift up the first stencil. So first of all, removing the tape. I think I'm actually going to lift from this side. Yes, looking perfect. So what I'm going to do next, very important. A couple very important steps. So first of all, I'm going to position my stencil here and I'm going to remove um, as much of the paint as I can from this stencil and I'm going to use it for my next two stencils. So that's step number one. Okay, beautiful. Now I'm going to cover it with paper towel and spray with water because I'm not going to be cleaning it right away so that the paint does not dry on the stencil. See, I didn't get any paint here, so I will need to touch up this part when it's going to be dry. And for my sides, I want to do something a bit different today. So I want to drag some of the color down. It's like the stencil embellishment slides down the side here. And I will probably need to add a bit more paint when it's dry. Everything else is looking so beautiful. You see how cool these pops of red and copper look here? They make it blend so well with the rest of the painting. So let's repeat the steps on this one now. I want to have a little bit of that bright clean gold and the rest I will be adding from my cup those colors that I scraped from the previous stencil. Got some of the gel escaped with this one, so I'll need to clean up this section a little bit quickly. But first, again, let's repeat the same step. I'm going to scrape off all of this paint in my cup, and then I'm going to use it on the smallest stencil. All right, looking good. I'll need to do a couple really minor touch-ups when it's dry, but let's focus on the small one first. Let's reveal the last one. Oh, I'm excited to see the final look. Ah, oh, this one is so beautiful. The painting is 
done and finished, but first of all, to the news that I promised. So starting early November, I'm going to start offering Gicle fine art prints of six of my best paintings, and all these fine art prints will be available in limited editions. So once sold out, it's not going to be available anymore. And if you're looking to make a present for someone special, or maybe you want to get some inspiration from me, for yourself, this project finally comes to life. I will be sharing a lot more soon in following videos, but if you want to be the first one to know once the prints are live and ready for purchase, uh, you can sign up for email notification on my website. I will send you the emails right away as soon as the prints are live. I highly recommend you do that because of the limited numbers of the editions. So stay tuned. And now to this painting. Oh boy, this one is definitely the hottest one I have done in this style and in this particular look. I love it. The flames are totally dancing around it and I really like the colors, how the colors turned out inside of these embellishments. It's not the first time I blend it and I just love how gold and copper and orange just work together. It's beautiful. And also, you know, the drippy sides, you don't see it here, but you can see it on this part and on this part. I think it also looks kind of cool because it definitely adds, you know, it, it's in the balance with the rest of the sides because the rest of my sides are also drippy and I think there is just something about it, about this look. What do you think? Also, I have another question. I have planned this painting in this ori orientation, but now that I look at it, I think this way it also looks really cool. I don't really like it in landscape, only in portrait, but both ways work. And I like this particular layout because of this direction of flames here. I think this one also works very well. So let me know which one you like better, the previous one, number one, or this one, number two. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed the tutorial and if you want to keep me motivated to create more and share with you here on YouTube. Thank you for joining. Make sure to sign up for the Prince updates and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.